Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, as soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow in any environment, at any scale. It's not for everyone, but if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer.
You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Hello and welcome in to the ECAC channel. We are coming to you live today, this beautiful Tuesday, to bring you some Valorant action. Of course, we're going to have a very hype matchup in between uh, University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And we're also going to have, I'm blanking right now. Can you help me out, Flater? I'm sorry. Stonehill Cottage. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say Stonewall for some reason, and I think it's because I'm <laughs> fixated on the South for some reason. That's just me right now. Flater, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I'm very excited for this Valorant. You know, I talked about this in the backstage as well. Might as well talk about it. I've been casting Rocket League for the past five hours, so some Valorant action is definitely needed here. And I want to talk, I want to take a minute to talk about these two teams. Visionary, we got UNCG coming into this matchup with a 5-0 scoreboard right now. 5-0. Yeah, I mean, they're, Stonehill. they're running through it right now. They're looking great. And we got Stonehill at one to four and the one win that they had was of a forfeit so i would be worried coming in uh, coming into this matchup but you know this i could it could also be taken as stonehill this is your chance at redeeming yourself this is your chance to put in that second win on the board here at ecsc i mean you definitely can here and i think the thing for me personally is the sheer fact that there is no pressure here uh, on stonehill mm -hmm. at all there, there's none it's just like hey you know what we're we're facing a team that's five and zero today we might as well throw everything in the kitchen sink at them speaking of the kitchen sink we're going to go ahead and look at the map pool that we're going to be playing tonight it's an interesting one because i'm gonna be honest with you uh flater we don't see fracture a lot here in college valor and it's a lot of ascent it's a lot of haven it's a lot of icebox we're actually starting off with fracture and uncg actually picked it Wow, I you know it seems like I, I can just imagine the country like guys, you want a meme? <laughs> Let's go for fracture first. I mean, it could be a meme. It could be the fact that some people are just really good at executing on fracture. There's a bunch of different lineups mm. you can run. Obviously, neon extremely prevalent on fracture just because of that wall is so useful, especially into getting on B site. And then you use you see brimstone all the time, and it's just the reason that those three smokes are so right. important for cutting off those choke points instead of maybe having an omen or an asher that can only get two. So if you're not running brimstone, you almost have to run double controller. Yeah, absolutely. We got we need to have like brimstone, or abs, or viper, uh, essentially very important uh, for this play. And we'd be it'd be very interesting to see what kind of roster both of these teams uh, go for. However, I do think that UNCG, since they picked this matchup, they might have a, a slight edge if we are ignoring their current scoreboard. Yeah, of course. I mean, it really just comes down to, of course, UNGC. You see them attacking first. We're going to see an Omen and a Viper. So the double controller pick coming in hot once again. Love to see that. Of course, you're going to see Chamber a lot on this map. The B main control he offers, the A main control he offers off of those initial picks and being able to teleport out are just too ridiculously strong. Um, it really comes down to what initiator we're going to see, right? Because I believe Breach is probably the best initiator that is suited for this mm -hmm. map along with Fade as far as the Intel initiator if you're going to run double. So it's going to be interesting to see where they kind of go with this because I'm not seeing an initiator on the board that has flashes for Greensboro at all. And what I'm interested in here is Stonehill on the defensive side. I see Phoenix coming in and Visionary. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, I haven't seen Vision. I haven't seen a, a duelist like Phoenix come into play in a very long time, especially in College of Valorant. Well, Phoenix, since he did get buffed, has one of the best ranked win percentages. Um, currently out of all the agent pool, right? Because his flashes are basically unavoidable now. They're extremely quick. They're hard to deal with. The, the mm. thing is with the curveball, though, however, we, we don't really see Phoenix still be successful in high-level coordinated play versus, you know, right. just the ranked meta where you can flash for yourself, get a pick, and kind of move on. And obviously, you can heal yourself, which is great. Um, maybe it was just them kind of feeling the need to have them. We're also seeing the Reyna come out from uh, the guitar as well. So it's... I mean, it's an interesting lineup, but you know, at some point, you got to roll with comfort picks as well. You know you're the underdog. It's better to play right. an agent that you do know than play something you don't just because it's quote-unquote meta. Absolutely. And uh, to be fair, uh, Phoenix's wall does uh, pull in for the Viper Viper wall that they currently are not running. No Viper from Stonehill's side. UNCG, it's a pretty, uh, pretty classic player looking for a B push straight up. One man on the flank could find two. And look at that. They're already running towards him. You know, the beautiful thing about Fracture is... 
even on defense, you're playing offense, right? Because you're actually starting out on the sites and the middle of the map is completely gone. So it's always interesting to see. We're going to see Bob kind of swing out here. Priz is just sitting here waiting. He's got a perfect timing if he wants to go ahead and use this. And there is the timing paying off. Bob's going to go down. And that's how we start this off. The Killjoy turret going to be down as well with the Molly coming out. It's looking like solid control right now for UNC Greensboro. And they already have the slide. Uh, already have the side. Plant goes down. Misaki finds one. Xnet does trade out somebody. It's gonna be pajama, nonetheless. Metro. We see him using that one smoke early on. Three v four situation here. Priz slowly helping back into the side. Doesn't find one. Spamming in, being a nuisance for the defensive half now as they are already pushing in towards side does he find one priz it does work out and there's a second kill going over to willy last man does he stick for long no he doesn't first round goes to uncg well i gotta give props to masaki i mean you're making an impact right you do get a pick you're the last one alive you have the chance to come on site and you're the sub for stonehill so for him to be the only one that gets a pick that entire round coming in kind of cold as the sub definitely good to see there i'm just kind of again i'm kind of worried about their defensive comp here not having that viper not having that really an ability to slow anyone down except for the turret and really maybe a phoenix molly but other than that i mean you have a paranoia but you only get one of those around and it's very costly at 300 creds it's going to be difficult for them to be able to keep greensboro offsite absolutely and i feel like in that case they should definitely be going for retakes rather than early peaks and seems like they have the right idea there willie and jake going right back to the side but there it is xg next does find one it's gonna be hoshi now the smoke does come in it's gonna buy some time jake already vulnerable will be going down and it is an absolute blowout here dean i believe it catches four players <laughs> i mean that's the purpose of the anti-eco, right? You buy up specters, you buy up heavy shields, you make sure you don't get lucky one shot by, you know, potentially a force by coming from the other side, and you just steamroll through. I, it's perfectly executed there. They were able to execute onto site, just take care of business. They don't lose a specter here. We have one actually flexing up to a bulldog. It's going to be Metro for free here. Just going like, hey, I didn't buy last round. Everybody else bought specters, so let me flex up to a pseudo rifle. You're going to have pajamas sitting here because they're opting for the util on light shields as well. So it's not even a full and complete buy right now for Stonehill. Yeah, economy is looking really good from the UNCG side. Now Jake with the flash is evaded, but the Prowler does come in. It's going to put that reveal in. Not going to not gonna catch much information, but the push comes in from UNCG. Peeking into the side. There it is. Side already under control. And like I said earlier, they got to play for retakes. Can they make this work? Dean on the specter looking as dangerous as ever. Goes the speed goes down. Willie finds Bush. Misaki there on the counter. Hoshi finally finds one. The good the defense has been holding on strong. Do they take the side back? I mean, that's the question. They do have the sight, but they don't have the flank prepared as Hoshi's able to find one. Here's Bob. Having to play with the spike, doesn't aware of Metro there on the side. This is a perfect double swing angle and the spike plane is pretty much perfect as well. Here comes the alarm bot just to spot one out. It's gonna be shot out. The jump spot's coming from behind. Uh, Takes the fight, almost oh. gets the spray transfer. Goes to the classic, but runs out of time. Priz is gonna clutch it up for the attackers. And oh my, Stonehill was close to that one. All he needed was one bullet, but he did not know what health chamber was at. So he went, I believe he switched up to the classic, even when he had f five bullets left. Really unfortunate that Stonehill wasn't able to take that one. Like you said, extremely close, extremely close. They have, it seems like they've been listening to the stream, going for the retakes rather than trying to stop them early on. But things not looking so well. And with another eco coming in, this might just be another round of victory for UNCG. It's definitely looking like it. I mean, they caught two free or they caught one free upgrade as well. Obviously, the economy was just fine. It looks like just another rush down a hit. We're going to see how this comes out. A oh, haunt immediately destroyed. Prowler going to spot out the fade. At some point, you got to kind of mix it up and throw somebody else there. And Willie oh. gets caught with Util out, and he's going to be completely removed from play. The early take. Here comes the Viper Wall. Priz up here as well. Gets the wall wow. bang headshot on Jake, and they are fully on site again. This has been an absolute dominating Last performance here. The stand. defense nowhere near this. The Vipers are on the offense. They're not even at sight. This is how confident these players are. And they should be. It was already an eco round. They're looking too good. Uh, it's, so I just want to throw this out there. Obviously, uh, second round has to kind of be a force round. Um, two flawlesses against eco rounds now for UNC Greensboro. Once with the Spectres once with the full rifle buy so obviously a little bit rough masaki is going to be looking 
to be, get themselves a gun here. It is going to be a full buy this time with full shields up and down the roster for Stonehill. They were quite close on their last full buy, but last time it was against SMGs and one Bulldog. This time they're going up against all rifles. We're going to see what they can do here with another potential retake, but it's looking like we're going to have a split push for the first time. No, I like what I see. Deciding to switch things up. They don't want to go in guns blazing every single time, hoping for the same outcome. You can always expect Stonehill adapting to the place here, but Extine here trying to figure out some early angles, just trying to get some information for his team before pushing right in. There's a lot of slow plays coming in, but the main aim is to stake B side again as Bob does fine too. The patient coming in, the alt comes out. Does Bob go down? Yes, he does. Dean being an absolute nuisance to this team. Pajama finds one. Hoshi finds Willie's alt, but it's not going to be enough to put him down. A 4v3 situation here with the attack side completely in their favor. And now having that second smoke plus the Viper is just so vital here. Hoshi's just able to sit back off site, play their wall, play whatever they need to. They're going to watch this come out. And oh, actually going to lose that one to Willie. It's now a 3v3 Willie, though. 5 HP pushing up to tower. We're going to see if they can find one here. This is going to be vital. Here's the swing. It's going to be one by Din. And I mean, the spray down through. Jake's going to get one. Not able to find the second. However, it's going to be a 4K right there for Dean. And... QNC Greensboro just looking so strong on this map right now. Absolutely. And you know, it's moments like these when you feel like the wall evolves through damage does is not enough. You just look at the Counter-Strike days and it's like, why Why did I tag him just for 20 health? This does not make sense. Bush did have the right idea, but the spray not working in his favor. Five rounds to UNCG and Stonehill will be getting another eco going their way. And I mean, let's see if they go three for three on flawlesses. Uh, that's I, that's the prop bet right now. If you're in Vegas, it's over under, you know, a solid 125 <laughs> money line right now for Greensboro to get another flawless round on an eco. As pajama gonna sneak out a little bit, get tagged up, just a little wall bang damage though, nothing too crazy coming off of their health there. As Metro looks to push up here, the smoke is gonna come out delaying the push a bit, but it's pretty obvious that this is gonna be a B hit and it's gonna be another retake scenario, most likely for Stonehill as Pajama just up here fighting for their life on two sides. I'm just noticing we got Willie and Jake just pushing in from the flanks. They gotta come in and they gotta come in quick. They've been taking too long, but look at that. Great first kill from Pajama. However, putting it back into a 2v4 situation. And if they were only here a little early, they probably would not have been absolutely dominated as soon as they reached any closer. Six rounds in a row going to UNCG now. That works. Uh, it wasn't a flawless, I can say that. Um, <laughs> Pajama was able to get one on B site and get insta traded out. Uh, UNC just looks like they really have a plan for this site right here. I really like that offensive Viper wall as well. Just throwing out, knowing that you have the Omen on the other side to smoke out anything else that's necessary. And you're already cutting off the entirety of the site. I might actually yoink that one because that's a super nice wall for offense. This is exactly what I was thinking right now. Like, you know what? I've never seen that one because I usually don't run Viper, but when I do, I will be sure to keep that one in mind. As we see another B push coming in from this UNCG side, and they're looking as confident as ever. Just, you know, just putting in those peaks, trying to get some damage, and not not finding anybody. So Stonehill has been playing a much patient game now. Yeah, they have to play a passive game. I mean, when you're losing all the opening duels and there's the wall, you completely cut off the sight line and now you can just run in for free. Essentially, there's only one right now in tower. That's the only stopping point. The paranoia going to come out for the offense as well. As we see us get on site, one's removed from tower and site's just completely contained. There's the orb as well. Viper's actually going to push through this and try to fight Bob and three other people. Maybe a little bit of a heat check as this is going to be a 4v3 now in favor of the defenders. Oh, feeling a little too confident there is Stone a little bit of a plan, man advantage just for a little down to a 3v3 the nade comes in gonna be pushing back the player just for a little while Bob finds one on the odds with this we see the omen hiding in the smoke does he find him that's the crucial part Metro comes in finds the diffuser and like I said this man could be the change but Willie does put him down to the ground Stonehill get their very first round victory hey you love to see it as that's a little close buddy I, I mean it, they're gonna get it with like three to go but that's uh <laughs> you need to calm that a little bit sooner he needs to come and get the spike you got to secure those rounds early especially when it's your first one as you know Stonehill did a much better job there though they utilized their ults obviously you still have Killjoy ult to push them off a of site 
and the big thing for me personally is with that killjoy ult right you have to either burn the showstopper on it or you're getting no value like it's just it is what it is they're gonna hold you off of that site so i'd really like to see that potentially get popped early and kind of delay these very quick hits that unc greensboro has had so far that or just go for the breach uh breach see that that is one way to get rid of the kg salt however as of right now it's gonna it's, it's, they bring up something different to the field here uncg now pushing in towards a side early peaks coming on through not finding anybody not yet but jake has been playing a very confident game i wouldn't recommend it especially against a guy like need who's looking for another kill but he does get caught off guard Four finds one on the recovery, gets his teammates a little terrified there. Oh, but Bush has already lurked all the way up B tower. And are they going to be prepped for this? Is my question. The nightfall getting prepped. Nightfall used to try to get everybody out of the site. Spots one, so the Phoenix is spotted. Complete Ooh. headshot annihilation right there from Bush. They're going to be taking site. It's not going to be a 3v3 retake. You still do have the From the Shadows to potentially get some information on the Stonehill side, but this retake is going to be tough sledding ahead. Absolutely gonna be tough. We have the very same wall coming in from a Viper. This time Viper not around for the retake though as Priz finds one looking for the other gets as well gets it as well. And I you know I'm just looking at the gun buddy there. I'm a little I can make sense why this has been the one side. I mean, it, it definitely can be, but I mean, gun buddies don't mean everything, right? Uh, I mean, some people can, you know, purchase an account. I'm not saying that any of these players did. Of course, they are coming out with fire and flames, to quote Dragon Force. But it has been something to see right now. Stonehill kind of getting shut down again. It was a very good bait onto A, a lot of initial aggression, burning the showstopper on it as well. And I was honestly surprised that Dean had held on to it as long as he had because he's 12 and three. He technically could have had two ults almost by now by this round if he would have just burned it a little bit earlier. You're gonna see that run it down potentially come into play here as well as the picks are just coming in already for Hoshi. There's already a man disadvantage on Jake on the shorty. Can he do much with it? No, need. Dean, this comes in guns blazing with the satchels. Finds one, Priz getting another pajama on the sheriff, another eco round and it might be another flawless one in the making. Yes, it is the three flawless rounds on all on Ecos for you and CG and Visionary. Like you said, this team is the one who beat here. Yeah, Flader, they're, they're feeling good. They're coming in. They are undefeated for a reason. We're seeing that right now. Nobody on the team negative by any count or stretch. Of course, Bush coming in with those six assists that you expect to see on a fade player as well. And it really just comes down to right now that the attacks from UNC are just extremely cohesive and it doesn't look like Stonehill really has a defensive setup at all minus a KJ. You're running two duelists. You're only running an omen. It's just really difficult to be able to deal with what fracture brings you as we see the running back getting extremely aggressive. Going to find almost no chip damage. Priz is going to find two. Bob's going to trade one back out. The flashes, everything going down in sight right now. Willie's able to get one. Can he get two? He can. And somehow Dean is going to get taken down by Bob as well. It's going to be a 2v1 to finish this off. Rain is going to have about 75 health. And that was just a bloodbath on A main. Absolutely, and I definitely did not expect Stonehill to take that round, especially with the strat that they were going for. However, flashes after flashes, an absolute blowout, like you said. No better way to describe this. We see Hoshi on the spike trying to make this 1v2 run in his favor. Do they hear the rope? Yes, they do. Borb realizes, with, realizes the position now, switching over to B side, but Hoshi seems like A might be his aim. A is definitely the aim. It's definitely the idea. The fact is, though, that they've split up on this one knowing that they have or they probably think they have a little bit of chip damage through the door we see pajama just kind of sitting here just waiting to hear it there you hear the orb they definitely know they're planting on a currently and there is the swing from pajama gonna be able to secure it two to eight you know what stonehill can definitely bring this back they probably need to get two more fracture is a bit offensive or attacker sighted but you definitely feel more comfortable with an eight four going into offense especially with this lineup than you would like a nine three or a ten two absolutely needing the, getting those two rounds is going to be necessary and they have the economy to work with of course if they if they lose this one the next round is obviously out of the picture because the economy is not looking great for some of these players i mean greensboro is just stacked you win eight rounds so obviously six of those being in a row you're pretty much set for the rest of the half it's just kind of how valorant works
and especially with Prez oh, not even popping that sort of force yet we haven't actually seen a chamber operate yet at all he hasn't popped his sort of force he hasn't bought an operator he's just been rifling and getting massive value out of it yeah, yeah. And I mean, in a map like Fracture, when you're um, when you're just dominating the competition, pushing in through, getting up close and personal, you don't need the operator. Spriz finds another one. These guys have not been going for any slow-paced plays whatsoever. It's been a rushing in, get those sights, get those plans down. Cohesive gameplay, to say the least. I mean, it certainly is, and I think the main reason for it is they just trust their aim. They're like, hey. You know, we can take this team in aim duels. We're gonna do what we can. Willie gonna get picked off as that flash isn't successful. The smoke coming out long, two trapped by generator. We're gonna see what they can do here. Bob playing a short angle here. I think might have seen Metro's gun. It's not gonna matter though here as another smoke is sort of and the spam and the bullying just commences right now. Bob gonna have to find some way to find some value here. And oh my, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Yeah, we do not condone bullying, but that is exactly what it seems like. UNCG, they have been bringing in the fire, like we mentioned earlier. Amazing plays coming in from each and every single one of these players, you know. We got three players setting at more than 10 kills. Even then, Bush and Metro, like you said, they have been contributing so much with the kind of utility usage that they've been bringing into the table. And that utility usage is just one of those things that kind of sets teams apart, right? And I mean, I, I mentioned the fact that you kind of need a double control setup if you're not going to run Brimstone on this map. And I think you really see that coming into play just because it's really hard for Omen to take care of what's necessary because the Fracture is basically Bizarro World. It's opposite world. You are, you know, pushing from the outsides of the map into the inside versus, you know, from the extremities in. And so that really just causes you to have to smoke more things than you can kind of handle with an Omen or an Astra only having those two smokes. <laughs> Oh, the peaks coming in from hey, Willy goes there. for the flash. Prez <clears throat> on the operator finally. We talked about this before. We had to see it from him, and there it is the first kill with the op coming in from Prez as the side already where UNCG is taking Hoshi, even with the spam, putting in some damage points. Jake the Tong looking to push in, but can he push in further though? Because it seems like a 5v3 position, it might just not work out for them, even with just sprays. It seems like everything has been going in their favor. Favor. Pajama, can you last for long? Yes, he can. This ult could be devastating. Not for long. Uh, I was about to say that is the prime example of the caster curse right there. That all looked pretty good and it's gone. Um, I mean, <laughs> I would honestly, though, the, the only thing I don't understand there for Stonehill is why are you saving that alt when you know they're five pushing, you know they're rushing in? Why are you not using that as a, a way to start a retake, right? Like, your, your your comp is super retake heavy on defense because you have, you know, that Phoenix, because you have that Reyna, you have to play off the flashes, you have to play off the teammates' utility. You're not using that that lockdown to give your team space to actually try to get onto site, and you're holding onto it for 12 rounds. It just doesn't make sense to me. And uh, it always seems like Stonehill have been uh, going for the same aim duels again and again, even when they know they, uh, they'll end up with the exact same result. Why? Because that's how good UNCG has been in their mechanical ability. Stonehill not working with the utilities. Like you said, if the ult was popped out a little sooner, they might have had a chance for a more, much more cohesive style gameplay here. Metro already finding one. We were just at the start of the round and it's already a 5v4. It just kind of comes down to being one of those things. And I mean, you can be as aggressive as you want to be, right? When you're chamber, you can just kind of swing that. Obviously, it was coming from the opposite way. Willie's going to get into the smoke here, probably trying to look at to do some damage. But look at all the map control that's already been taken over. I mean, you have one just sitting, basically. They're sitting on spawn. They're just all the way behind. Oh, Jake, no. I mean, that's a great mm. flank, but two of them out there already, that's going to be tough sledding ahead, especially with Masaki losing that one to Priz. Down, mm, Pajama already facing the wrath of two of the amazing players from UNCG will be going down. <laughs> Willie, you can't be spinning that knife for a little too long as there is a man, Priz, coming in, putting him down to the ground, two rounds away from victory is UNCG. UNCG, I mean, not enough can be said. This team is 5-0 and for a reason, like I mentioned before, and they are proving to you why. They are bringing Fracture out. They are bringing unique strategies. Like we said, that Viper Wall I've personally never seen before. I think it's genius. They're just really comboing utility well. They're not afraid to take those aim duels. And I know Einstein once said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. But with the way Fracture's kind of set up and you know how aggressive Greensboro has been, they kind of were forced to take those aim duels because they were going to come to them anyway and do the same thing. 
makes sense here for this team to go for what they have been going for so far. However, like we said, like we said, we mentioned earlier, the mechanical ability has been just a little too good for this team as they already brought this down to a 4v2 here. Wouldn't be surprised if the last two players couldn't bring in much. Bush with the power pushes in, gets the information that he needs, but nobody. Uh, getting impatient here. Everybody has been playing a phenomenal game. And as I say that, they try to decide to push in. Bush finds one. Can he get the second one? Yes, he can. The answer is always yes. The ter 3k for Bush and only one round away from victory. Yeah, I mean, Bush getting himself up to 12. It's just, uh, I don't want to say a team diff. It, it honestly it looks more like a comp diff. Um, it's just <laughs> one of those things where you're not setting yourself up for success. And like I said earlier, I would much rather people play comfort picks than play an agent they're not familiar with. But on a map like Fracture, where it is so different, where attacking is so diversified because you can be pushed off the rip from two different angles, it, it just causes that kind of collapse. And I don't think the, co the composition of Stonehill is really able to deal with that. Obviously, we see Pajama doing a great job on Killjoy. She was one of the OGs when Fracture first came out. Everybody was like, yo, her ult's overpowered. It covers all of A site or all of B site. It's great. As Willie, oh Willie, you're gonna you're gonna have to do some work here. The flash is good, but Bush still finds the kill, and that's how we open up this round number 15. Final round here as Hoshi finds one. Pajama trades and Mel trades coming left, right, and center down to a 4v2 already. We see everybody just now crawling towards B side, pending doom for Stonehill as all of the players do go down. It's gonna be UNCG taking the scoreline 13 to 2. And what a game this has been. And like we said, UNCG has been 5 0 for a reason. Make it 6. Well, and also, I mean, I mentioned earlier as well that we really see certain maps. We see Ascent a ton, right? We're going to be seeing Ascent after this one. We see Haven. We see Icebox or Bind. And the reason really coming into it is having that unique map pick as well just sets other teams back so much further. To be able to comp out and to strat mm -hmm. out a, a solid fracture or to be able to strat out a solid pearl just puts you just a little bit above because you don't have to ban those maps. If you know what, you take a couple L's on Haven, you're able to swing it back and you're like, hey, we can pick Pearl. It's all good. I mean, looking at the ACS, obviously, insanity. We have two players over 300, of course, for UNCG. Uh, Hoshi riding in with a 264 is a Viper. Uh, that's pretty darn solid. I think 270 for ACS is like the star player designation as far as the professional teams go. You have three people right at that line or over that line. You're doing pretty darn good. They absolutely are. And I believe we will be having the second round over at ASINT. So one more opportunity for Stonehill to make something against this monster of a team. So we will be right back with the second one. I believe we'll be taking a very short break here. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more Valorant. Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. just kids, that's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on Shamu. That mean I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry. My soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live.
can't accept and ignore Just kicking down all the doors Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it It's gotta be real big I gotta make it just for my kids And for their kids as kids That's wealth years and years Promise my brother soon as he out And finish this bid We finna do it bigger than anybody ever did The odds is real big Jobs, that's real big Satan trying a little My God, is real big Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big I gotta do it big The only way that I can live others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Ah. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? working your way up from the bottom instead how does this sound starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations skip entry level decide to lead as an army officer becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow. In any environment. At any scale. It's not for everyone. But if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer.
You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down. Hello and welcome back once again to ECAC. We're coming into you. I'm Visionary One alongside me, Flader, and we just saw a 13 to 2 romp from UNC Greensboro, of course, versus Stonehill College. Honestly, Flader, not really a lot to break down from that game. It was just kind of aim diff, util diff, kind of everything diff on the side of UNC Greensboro. And so I wanted to throw it to you to see if you had any thoughts about the last game. Of course, I think your opinions are pretty much the same as mine, though. Yeah, so I the two rounds that Sonal did end up taking was uh, one of them just an absolute blowout with them throwing everything they have in the utility, flashes after flashes, and, and uh, UNCG, we saw them committing to one side. So if if they get more of such rounds, maybe we'll have to, maybe we'll have a bit of a close game. Ascent, like we said, a totally different map, so we might not see as fast of a gameplay from coming in from UNCG. They might decide to chill and uh, you know dial it back a little and take round oh, one by one. Maybe we see Stonehill looking for the advantage there as of right now the roster is coming in and what do you think about these two roster lineups okay i was about to say i it looked like greensboro wasn't going to run a duelist and i was like are we throwing this back to the old tsm comp when you know wardell was running sage <laughs> i was i was a little <laughs> bit confused they're hovering they're memeing a bit um i'd like to see stonehill do a little bit different there's just something just a little bit different here obviously having a phoenix and a reina Phoenix can flash for himself. Reyna with her unlimited flashes could be a little bit useful in taking mid now compared to what she used to be able to do because you couldn't throw that flash from mid and have it blind anybody who was, you know, watching behind right. behind that big gate. Uh, so we'll see what kind of happens here. I think Stonehill's going to round theirs out a little bit more, and I think we're going to basically see Chalk here from Greensboro. They are going to drop, of course, the chamber and bring out the Killjoy and bring out a jet this time, and that's a, uh, that's a comp that, honestly... Um, it was Optic kind of brought back that Killjoy on FNS that kind of made them kind of pseudo meta again on Ascent. I mean, in my personal opinion, K uh, KJ seems to be an absolutely crucial agent, especially to hold down B side. I still believe that so one KJ is agent. more than enough to stop whatever kind of dominant force is heading towards B. Well, I mean, uh, KJ is something. We're going to see Stonehill going a little bit more aggressive with the chamber. It makes sense. They're on attack. They probably want to get some rounds in the bank knowing that Ascent is a defensive sided map so i don't mind that pick at all knowing you're going into this on offense it is going to be a little bit harder like you said to hold down that b site but you have a raise you have a sova you have a sky and they're running that brimstone so it's going to be interesting to see how they use that brimmy stimmy if they are just going to need to be exploding onto sites or if they're going to be choosing something a little bit different we shall see as i mean there are opportunities for the flanks coming into this one as i believe we have no uh cypher or i believe we do have kj okay with one alarm but sure it should be more than enough to get those flanks covered and what better way to just place it right here at the center field and priz of course heading towards b yeah i mean it's not really a surprise that priz of course is over there we're gonna see of course the other site we're gonna see a little a stack going on with a little lurk action coming on from the chamber on b very standard setup. Uh, Jake, obviously, or uh, yeah, Jake the dog going to be bringing out those headhunter bullets. And I mean, I've kind of seen a changing of the guard with Chamber on not opting for those headhunter bullets and instead going with the trip and the ghost to start off instead, just because you get like 95% of the value and you get more than four shots in the gun. Uh, I personally don't do it quite often, but I have seen it more and more as the one way already coming out to kind of deny this early A, a main push. And it is, like you said, a bit of a split as the two players from short already peeking in and the first few trades come in while Pajama finds one push. Rather, Dean now pushing back with the ghost in his hand. Can he get the spam in? No, he can because caught on the reload. And it seems like Stonehill have been having a fabulous first round here as they're already down to a 5v2 position. Metro gets one, finds another. Down to a 2v2 suddenly is Pajama. All right, brings it right back to a 1v2 here. Prison, not a lot of health. What does he do? I think you just have to play it out. Are they going to rotate off of this? Oh, the Mad Lads with Jake just sitting there was completely able to lurk through B entirely. 
might be able to completely catch the killjoy of unc okay. off guard here as he's just holding this angle only at 20 hp a body shot you can hit him in the pinky toe oh. but the timing is just off are you kidding me that's ridiculous as they peek back out now oh my god they're just playing a game of chicken right now I mean, I don't, I don't believe that Frizz would be able to take this down, especially already at 20 health. The door goes down, bullets coming in left, right, and center side completely in Stone's control here. As he goes for a long peek here, I'm not sure what the play is that he's going for right now. I mean, I personally think this is genius. I mean, obviously you're gonna have to fight two on site. Jake the dog doing a good job, just kind of getting back on the site. The smoke's coming in as well, so you have two of the angles smoked off. You know, and you're going to see if they come out, of course, of this tree angle, but they're not peeking it. So they don't have any initial intel. And it could be two swift headshots from Priz to potentially end the round here. He's going to have to isolate his 1v1s. One enemy remaining. Oh, can he find one? Yes, he can. No bullets coming in from Jake the dog, but Pajama doing so well and just hiding in plain sight when he needs to. But look at that from Priz. He does find two, but it's not going to be enough as a little too late to the spike there does go down in the first round goes to stonehill after a long hard fight i mean it was it was really smart by stonehill there to go ahead and pop that brimstem and just get out and be like hey jake has position over here the timing notwithstanding because jake should have had theoretically an easy kill there and it ended up not happening uh because priz was on 20 hp but hey priz gets all the guns off but it doesn't matter it's a pistol round right you're basically at a free 800 credits it's going to end up being this way and we're going to see an eco come out for the first time so far this series for unc greensboro and let's see what they're able to pull off with the smaller pistols going up against specters over at stonehill a bit of a split push coming in over at b side as they're just checking out what who is going to be present at mid there it is a free first two peaks coming in willie finds dean who's on the classic to my surprise not sure what the idea here is but so far they do have the guns Spike down B. Uh, that is uh we talked about bullying earlier the the double satchel over through willie does a good oh, job actually trading out metro there that shot by metro was actually disgusting though just coming out blind out of the smoke and able to secure one gonna see what they can get here as they just kind of shake their heads and be like yeah we're going for it why not you're gonna push in here against of course a lot of guns we're gonna see poningo come out with this one tries to get a flash can't get it he is gonna get somebody marked with this though as it gets wall banged off actually they're gonna secure a specter so they have an opportunity here as that's behind here's willie going with the wall bangs everybody going with the shots dean's gonna find one now here's the thing can he take the specters off and get value out of this that's the only thing that really matters at the end of the day is getting them off of their guns he's not gonna find it through bob they're gonna be able to secure two and it's gonna be 2-0 in favor of stonehill Look at that by Stone and Apps. Just a great defense coming in. But, you know, at the start of that round, it did seem like UNCG might be able to take the side back. Unfortunately, the Bucky coming in and not working out for this roster. UNCG now down by two rounds. And it is very surprising after that, after that absolute blowout of a game. That, is, that was game one. I mean, maybe I maybe it just comes down to Stonehill not really knowing what's going on with Fracture. You know, a lot of teams like to bring out those odd map picks just to give themselves an advantage. It might have just been one of those scenarios where Greensboro's like, hey, we're going to bring out Fracture. Oh, but we see the Odin coming out. Nobody getting spotted, of course, with that haunt, though. So I think they're going to assume that they're not actually playing B, but we're still going to have that chamber lurk, much like we saw on the initial pistol round, kind of sitting there as Bob going to get just absolutely murdered by that guiding light can actually remove him from the peak and the ability to actually support his teammate until now with that of course paint shells coming through tree not going to find anything and dean on the marshal is in a very crucial position here but it seems like everybody's going to be everybody from Stonehill is going to be pushing in towards mid, getting passed through Bam. smokes. Bush on the Odin does find one. His work is done as he's looking for the second one as well. Can he get it? No, he doesn't. But Penguin putting down another one from Stonehill. And it seems like UNCG finally things have been going their way. And it's, it's a flawless victory here in round number three for UNCG. Hey, it's a bonus round. Stonehill's going to get guns again, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Actually, Bob's going to be buying another judge. He's going to be playing... Um, was it Bunny for F4Q back in the initial days of Valorant Champions series that just would double blast pack with the most nasty double blast packs you've ever seen in your life and just judge everybody down in the face at a professional level? 
I think Bob's trying to bring a little bit of that magic back as we see a couple of light shields and no Bob's actually going to commit to the Vandal here. I'm a little bit disappointed that we're not going to see that initial A main blast back coming through. But Dean on the round four off. This might be disaster. Going to miss the initial shot. No, he actually gets the wall bang there. So it's going to be 32 health for Jake the dog. And they do realize that the flank is present over at, over at B side. So they're going to be a little more cautious about that. Unfortunately, Stonehill rather have a different approach they're looking for an all out a push they certainly are it's going to be interesting to see kind of what comes from this as we see bob go ahead and secure that orb and they are initially just rushing out of there and i don't think mid is kind of the place where you want to go if dean pops out he might be able to find some you know find some damage here with that operator and priz has just been able to lurk the backside of mid the entire time just playing off his own alarm bot this push is going to be delayed but you're going to see that smoke continue to come out and this oh this ko knife is going to be brilliant it's going to mark three as that's going to be out there and it's just going to be tough sledding ahead poningo doing a great job right there actually going to get taken out by misaki the trade by metro right there bob's going to get sprayed down through the smoke and we have the initial push shut down it's going to be a 2v4 with one spike on site and there's the swing from Prince to shut down the spike carrier and look at that amazing performance once again from uncg one kill away from sending stonehill back to the stone age because they don't have economy going in their favor now heading into round number five Nah, they're going to be throwing the good old-fashioned rocks and bows and arrows here. Um, that is not a pun because they have Sova on their lineup. So, at least I feel a little bit decent about that one. But yeah, they are traveling back to the Stone Age. They're going to be using revolvers and flint pistols to shoot three bullets at one time in the classic. So, it's going to be interesting to see again what kind of comes out from here. Jake the Dog, three away from that Tour de Force. So, that's not really going to be anything here. I think, honestly, you throw the stem beacon down, you frenzy up, and you just go for it. Because you do have the Brim ult right now for post plant. Yeah, and all they gotta do is get into that post plan situation and get the brim to a secure position as well. But easier said than done, as they're once again looking for an A split push here. Need on Dean once again on the op, looking for that early peak, but no early peaks coming in from B shirt as we see the Sova pushing in towards B side Misaki, and there he is on the ghost. Can catch him off guard here. Does he go for the flash? Does he go for the early peak? Let's just wait it out a little. Realizes that there is somebody present. Misaki now pushing in Dean as quickly as possible puts him down to the ground and it seems like we're already in a 5v4 position Dean in such a great position he realizes that he cannot be alone and he get for the second kill here Holding out and look at that amazing timing he manages to get away nonetheless with those jet updrafts still looking for that first kill Jake can he get some my Dean Oh, my pajamas actually going to get a pick here on a main. They're going to open this up and potentially get the spike down. This is kind of what I talked about. You just have to get Sova to a secure location. Gun retrieved here by Bob as well as pajama gets the plant down. This might be massive knowing that you have that ultimate, but it's going to come right on back. Willie here in a great position, but going to be taken away with the op and denied by Dean. And there's the ult a little bit too early. You're not going to be able to secure this one, sadly, unless you have that uh, light up as well. You're going to see him playing generator. So he definitely doesn't have the lineup onto that is Bush going to get it with the Odin again. Just playing generator with the sheriff in hand. Not much you can do against a roster like UNCG who's bringing fire guns blazing into a side. Taking that round lead back into their own hands. UNCG, they're back in this game and they're looking as strong as ever. I mean, they certainly are, and the economy now booming. I mean, Dean can buy another operator next round. What they do really doesn't matter. Bush hasn't died since he got picked up the Odin. You know, it's just the economy is so stable right now. We're going to have Pris setting up on B. We haven't really seen a B commit come out yet. There's just another small thing that I kind of want to admit. I know you have a, 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 I'm sorry, a sky for the, the util for being able to spot out people, but you have that Sova sitting there, right? And wouldn't you much rather try to get the information with the Sova and not have to commit yourself pretty deep than going the other way around as Bush is, of course, going to spam out B because all the walls here on Ascent are made out of paper mache. <laughs> And coming back to the soul lineup, and I have seen the man going for those drone peaks, but now the reveal hasn't been working out for him, not quite yet. As the side push towards B now failed as Bush once again on the Odin finds one. Odin, like we said originally, is not illegal, but certainly not happy about that kill. Stonehill down one man here as UCG are playing the dirty game. 
Yeah, and they're looking to hit this B site, but I mean, you have the peak coming up from Dean. I'm surprised he hasn't heat checked himself yet. And this is good. This might be timing right here. And it is. Dean's going to find the pick. Bush is going to get another wall bang and get a headshot on Pajama to just obliterate the remainder of the Stonehill squad. And it's going to be UNC Greensboro coming with four straight rounds after dropping the first two. And, you know, just when I try to focus on one play, that is five different positions on the map where UNCG is doing miraculous work. So in a matter of five seconds, the entire roster of Stonehill is already hitting the dust. And I'm like, wow, how do they end up putting this off every single time for the past two and three rounds? I mean, they... They're just util diffing. They have the gun differential right now. And I mean, until you remove Dean from that position, you're not going to be able to take mid at all. And you, Ooh. Jake, you got to know. I mean, it's been what, four rounds in a row now as that drone spot's actually going to come out. Dean's going to crawl to safety here. The Sky Dog, the Trailblazer is going to come out as well and get picked off. But you have to remember, they're sitting on Sheriffs. It's going to have to be vital one taps that are coming through as they explode onto site. Masaki's going to get taken out. Willie is found as well right here by Priz. Pajama going to find one as Dean just tries to get some shots down with the Classic. Pajama actually going to find a second, but the spike still down, of course, on this A site. And it's gonna, he's going to be facing Dean, which we all know is going to be how it's going to be ending up. We've seen Dean on the operator being so amazingly effective with it, even at close angles, the angles that you wouldn't expect. And when you know the pajama is just lurking about at A main, there's nothing you can do against a man like Dean, who's once again on the operator now crawling towards A short. And a B push now coming in from Stonehill. That was Willy on the Odin. All right, a bit of an Odin, Odin action here. I mean, I definitely love seeing the Odin on Odin violence. It's one of those things where it's like, hey, if you're going to spam us, I might as well spam you back. We're going to see how this works out. Obviously, somebody has to shoot that. Oh, he's pre-firing it. There it is, trying to get him off the angle. You love to see it. Bush having to retreat just a little bit. Bob going to get in here with a judge and try to wreak havoc. And hey, they might be successful here. Oh, oh, the Omen smoke, the Dark Cloud is going to come oh, down. Uh, the Nightfall coming out as well. We're going to see if they are able to push off of this. No, they're going to bail off of it. They might go right back into Dean's arms in mid. This is terrifying. Absolutely, they have no flashes going in. Misaki does he use it? Goes for the heal first. You would not want to peek Dean. All right, good reveal there. Like you said, the arrow the, and the real arrow becoming very useful as they're now finally pushing in towards mid. Penguin needs to fall back here. Being a very defensive yet courageous game. Battle in hand. Metro is holding on towards B side. Stonehill they're looking for the side. Can they find it? Sray going down. Metro struggles to find one. And B site completely under control for Stonehill. Ooh, I mean, it is, but Bush has something to say about it. A 2K with the Odin looking for more. Okay. Willie's going to find one with the Odin of their own. So we're going to look for that violence again. Bush with three. Wow. He's going to be looking for more as Willie is in mid. Pruz is going to take out Jake the dog and Dean going to get the wrap and find Willie in mid. 6-2. They have not dropped a round since their first gun round flater. This is insanity. Visionary, I just have one question for you. When you have the spike, why would you want to just hang out in those compromised positions, going up against Odin's left, right, and center? Go plant, get the money, hold down the side. Why would you be just going up close and personal, going through some early challenges against a team like UNCG, who have shown us what they're capable of mechanically? That's a great question. And honestly, I don't know. Uh, it could be a little bit of ego. It could be a little bit of something else. I know as, you know, a, a jet and chamber main, uh, egoing stuff is kind of my uh, kind of my thing as Dean gets one here, still has the dash online. He's going to find two, finally use that dash as they push up here. Brimstone going to be ratting in the smoke. Going to find a nice headshot and secure an operator here. So it's going to be a 3v3. That's a very interesting start to this round. But Bush is going to even out the odds once again, of course, with that Odin. And Bush once again on the Prowler in hand. The flash is not going to be working out from Misaki. It's such close range. Pajama, last man alive. Does he stick around for long? No, he doesn't. Bush doesn't even need to peek. It's going to be Penguins putting him down to the ground. 72 visionary. It seems like we might just be seeing another dominating game from UNCG. Yeah, it's certainly looking that way. And I mean, to be fair, to be fair, Ascent is a defensive sided map. So I'm not going to write off Stonehill completely yet. They do have kind they do have a nice comp, of course, with the sky, with the rays, with a brimstone as well. And we have four alts online for Stonehill. So for the love of God, get a spot, get a Sova lineup, get a dart somewhere back site, get 
just get Bush off this angle because he's been murdering every single offensive push that you've had towards this B site. The early reveal coming in from the same man, Willie, looking for Dean here. Does he find one? No, he doesn't. Not a lot of damage coming in either. Rather, none damage coming in for Willie as that is one ult already down. Jake the dog finally pushing Bush to the ground. So an opportunity to retake B. There certainly is an opportunity here, but Spike's going to be camping mid and they're going to be aggressing towards mid. And I mean, obviously, Dean just going to be sitting there watching this tree entrance, but with the way he's been shooting that operator, I don't see a reason why he wouldn't try to peek out on this. Maybe get a little heat check kill here. Of course, on the chamber, Jake the dog just kind of sitting there trying to play that angle. I think his crosshair might be a little bit too low. And if you're going to go against an operator, the last thing you want is a body shot. Absolutely. Now he does realize it's a little risky. They're just hanging out over at mid. I'm not sure who they're waiting for because everybody so far hasn't been peeking through Metro. Playing a very conservative game, deciding to hit B side as the push finally comes in from UNC, rather Stonehill, looking to push towards B. And there you go. Okay, so they're systematically clearing. You love to see this, but they're running into two Odins. This definitely isn't a fun time for anybody that's involved. Priz gonna find one here in Boathouse. The ping's coming out. Priz oh, okay. gets the collapse. Priz finds it. <laughs> Priz finds four. Can he get the fifth? The ace for Priz coming out with the Odin. Just camping out in Boathouse. He has a campfire. He's got some marshmallows and some grain crackers, and he's making s'mores out of Stonehill. He's sitting in the perfect angle, and we had the best view to view Priz just steamroll through the entire team. You know, it seemed like Stonehill had this sight. It was all just down to Priz, and he made it work. And it just goes to show that even at the highest ranks of this game, few rounds of Odin play hurts nobody. You can easily take rounds with this Odin. I mean... You know what? I'm, like, I'm cringing a little bit inside that so many Odins are being brought out because I kind of feel like it's VM. Is of course Dean's gonna find another pick mid, dropping Misaki there, who was trying to get the flash towards that. And then I mean, obviously you're gonna get that drone spot, but there's basically two sitting here with more Odins on site. I think Greensboro's just starting to have a little fun. They might be playing with their food a little bit too much here. Is this spike? Or I'm sorry, the uh, the uh, dart is going to come in. Poningo gonna find one there is Bob gonna go down Metro just deciding to teleport all over the place back to his initial position get the smoke off and Jake the dog gonna be sitting here and look at Dean's position here this is gonna be dangerous and another one drops and Metro it seemed like he was out playing himself here with that teleport everybody just decided to rotate back and he's just having fun or like all right I got it I, I'm, I'm gonna be uh, uh, reverse psychology this play here but once again in a 5v2 position make it a 5v1 as they're looking with flawless jake the dog at one hp nothing you can yet nothing you can do against the wrath of uncg the vandal in hand everybody peeking in slowly that you can hear the odin sounds creeping towards you and you can just counter taze as it's gonna be dean finding jake with that op headshot Oh my god, there's like, there's no sound cues that you can pick up on either because there's four Odins just blaring in your ears from both directions. So any directional sound that you're looking for, I'm sorry, you're not going to find it. The Odin is so gosh darn loud. It's just kind of one of those things. We're going to see an Ares coming out, probably hoping for that counter spam on B main, hoping to find one. But it is going to be difficult because the Odin does penetrate much better, of course, than the Ares does damage wise. So it might be tough sledding ahead. We're going to see what happens with Stonehill here trying to get to that 9-3 curse. 9-3 and here it is Bush once again all he, holding, all he needs is one sound cue and there it is already gunning down every single member will be caught off guard here as never mind Priz with his sacrifice make sure Bush stays alive and he's looking for another ace as everybody seems to be pushing right back now okay they realize that they do not want to peek Bush again in this ace, pro ace possibility. Yeah, you don't want to peek bush again and luckily for them dean actually pushed off of this so dean's not going to be holding this tree angle so this is about as free as mid is going to currently get but dean is coming back to peek this mid and he might find a timing here there's a, a small shoulder peek kind of just waiting knows that one has passed through already as sova trying to enter here on the two members of a oh, dean gonna get a gosh. nice shot in mid metro gonna get a shut down there as well jake the dog Going into heaven, playing a little aggressive here. I definitely like the idea, especially in a 4v2, but I need to see that Brimstones find some value in Dean with the Bladestorm. I mean, what are you gonna do, Pajama? 
absolutely nothing going against an Odin coming in from Penguin there making it a 10 to score scoreline and you know the, the last two times when I whenever I've seen Dean play with that operator even when he was recovering even when he was trying to rotate he had that angle down so no way you're catching this man off guard even when he's on the operator Dean has been an absolute mad lad in that first half going into the second one 16 to 3 5 plus KD going for Prez and Dean I, don't, I mean that's three players at 5 KD yeah uh, they're putting up Call of Duty numbers we'll just put it that way right I mean you're you're sitting there you're playing headquarters you're getting yourself you know you're going 50 <laughs> and 12 because you're not playing objective uh, that's pretty much Greensboro's world right now and we're just living in it I mean virtually in the server of course but we're out here we're watching a very solid team that is 5 and 0 looking to improve to 6 and 0 this is going to be tough sledding ahead Jake the dog here with that shorty and three headhunter bullets looking to potentially possibly do some work. And there's one over the top, gonna miss uh, the shot. Finds Bush though. So at least gets one. Dean's gonna get Willie back sight and Metro pushing up onto this right now. Looking very dangerous in this position. Two people kind of sitting on door. Jama actually gonna push out. The sky flash coming out as well. Priz gonna be able to find one. And that Killjoy turret is just doing so much for this post plant scenario. Now Sorley and Priz gunning down yet another one, all down to Misaki, the substitute coming in from Stonehill. Does he shine when he's needed the most? Finds the headshot, but it's not going to be enough to put Priz to the ground, because this man has been an absolute monster here in this pistol. I mean, Priz finds three, Dean finds himself, you know, two, and nobody else has to kill anybody. It just is what it is, and oh no. Uh, okay. Greens, bro, this is a little bit of BM. <laughs> I mean, if y'all are all going to go Aries for real, like, that is, that's something. Uh, we're going to see two Spectres coming out from Priz and, of course, Dean. And three Aries coming out, and I'm assuming they're just going to kind of try to spray this B main entrance down and see what they can find. Unfortunately for them, nobody right around the side will actually find somebody. But there it is, a reveal coming in. Briz finds one as Pajama gets a little too impatient with those gun plays. There it is, they're just pushing in. They don't even want to control the side. Get the spike down. Keep pushing in. Here it is. Briz finds one. They're looking for another. Misaki on the scout. Rather the marshal. Can he find one? No, he can. Not so fast. Metro puts him down. Willie gets the trade. But it's not going to be enough. As it's trade left, right, and center. Jake finds two before a right down fully. Right going down to Penguins. 12 2. One round away from victory. Uh, I don't know if you saw that there, but I just want to let you know that that is certified Valorant precise gunplay right there from Jake the Dog. Absolutely sprinting from left to right. Gets <laughs> yeah. a couple headshots yeah, yeah. with that Spectre. You'd definitely love to see it. Um, the run and gun, you know, it was it was complained about quite a bit in the initial stages of Valorant. It got nerfed a bit. It's still, you know, can be successful. And we definitely saw it right there as we look to see a complete mid push coming out from UNC Greensboro. And they are buying heavy this round. And you know when a team has been dominating you this badly with that uh, with that gun with that running gunplay going your way, I don't feel like UNCG should feel bad. This is 12 to 2. They're looking for the exact same scoreline as they did last time. It's down to a 4v4 here. But they just run through with the flashes once or twice. It doesn't matter. There it is. Another peak coming in from Bush. And like I said, they're just running. <laughs> they're just running and gunning. Look at Bush. I mean, at least he's clearing his angles, right? I think that's all that matters at the end of the day. Bush already on site. This is going to be a strong position for Jake the dog, uh, but he's the only one left. So Bush is probably going to get cleared out here. He is. He's going to drop. Little pre-fire spray coming in as well. And all the utility in the world is about to be jumped on one Jake the dog. As the flash is coming out, Metro running and gunning, trying to spray through the smoke. Jake's going to find another one, but Metro is going to get the drop. It's going to be two straight. 13 to twos in favor of UNC Greensboro. They're going to move on to six and oh so far. And unfortunately, of course, for uh, for Stonehenge, or uh, why am Brazil. I saying Stonehenge again? That's terrible. That's terrible. Like, <laughs> um, for, for Stone Hill, which uh, you know, Stonehenge is on top of a hill, so I'm just going to go with that one. Uh, dropping a one and five, <laughs> but. It, it really just comes down to, at the end of the day, obviously, Greensboro, super, super confident in their ability and in their gunplay. Hmm. 
Absolutely. I mean, we were making predictions that this could be a clean sweep coming in from UNCG, but Stonehill, you know, at the start of the at the start of the second, at the start of the second game, it felt like they had something going here. You know, we were really feeling like on ascent they might have something. You talked about how uh, people are just uh, caught off guard by fracture, but there are maps where they can make things work. But UNCG, they shattered those dreams. They said, "Look, look us in the eyes." They were not giving them any more rounds. Two rounds. That's all you want. <laughs> Nothing else. The dreams shattered for Stonehill College as UNCG put in another win to the board. Yeah, they put on another win on the back of four Odins and an operator. It was definitely something to see <laughs> on defense. That uh, that strat I haven't seen in quite a while. Sometimes you know what your aim isn't feeling crisp. You go to the Odin, just be like, hey, if I can spam a hundred bullets down the you know d down the map, maybe I'll get a kill. Uh, they were using them very precisely and getting a lot of kills with it. Of course, the ace coming out from the Killjoy as well. It was definitely nice to see. We're going to take a quick break. After this, of course, we're going to be talking with one of the members of UNCG. So bear around, stick with us. We just saw that 2-0. We're going to get that interview in right after this. And all the doors guarantee you, boy, fire for it. It's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents and now I got two rents. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything.
Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Ah. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Hello and welcome back to ECAC. My name is Visionary Run. Alongside me for this cast of this 2-0 has been Flader. Uh, Flader, it's been a phenomenal series of matches. Two 13-2s, uh, relatively in and out tonight, to be honest with you. So we do have a member, of course, from uh, UNC Greensboro that we're going to be bringing on. Welcome in Metro, everyone. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's going great, brother. Thank you for asking. How are you doing tonight? How are you feeling after two 13-2s in a row? We're feeling pretty great. Um, we've been doing this almost every week. It's been like the same thing, rinse and repeat. We have a good group of guys this semester and it's showing every week. Well, I mean, uh, I just have one. I have I have a few questions, but let's start, with, uh, let's start with this first one. The fracture pick. It was a meme, right, Metro? Uh, the fracture what? The fracture pick at the start. Uh, no, that's actually our comp. That's what we run. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's supposed to slow people down. We take a lot of space with it. It's mm -hmm. actual our comp. It's not a min comp. We, uh, we've been practicing it for like a week now, and it suits us really well. Yeah, it was definitely right. a point that we were hitting on during the early portion of, of the cast was, you know, if you don't run Brimstone, you kind of have to bring two controllers, and y'all brought the Omen and the Viper. And it really just, and it, like you talked about, it got you space, and it allowed you to basically lock them out of sight because they never had a sight line available to That's them right. so i just want to commend you on that because not a lot of people realize that that two that two controller comp can actually be extremely strong on fracture and y'all brought it out to i mean almost perfectly is that yep. something that y'all have been really working on to like kind of throw off other teams because honestly in college valorant it's pretty standard we see a ton of ascent we see a ton of haven we see a ton of icebox or bind we don't really see much else so are y'all just trying to you know effectively strategize so y'all don't have to ban that map and that y'all don't have to play to other team strengths yeah so that is Essentially, what happened? We realized when we were scrimming a bunch of other te a bunch of other teams that our fracture just wasn't up to par, and we kind of just sat down with each other and was like, "What do we do?" And we saw the FPX uh, Berlin Champions comp, which is our comp now, and we looked over the footage and was like, "I think we can do that. I think it plays to our strength." We've been using it in scrims. The first day of scrims when we used it did not go our way at all. But I told everybody, "Let's just sit down. Let's buckle down. Let's try to work out all these kinks." And here we are now. 
And I mean, definitely me and me and Visionary were just looking at all the kind of Viper walls and the plays that were being made here. And we were all just like taking notes. Yeah, we're definitely using this in our scrim games right. and, and our competitive games. But my second question, moving on to ma the map Ascent, you're losing the first two pistol rounds. How did that, was that like, uh, was that scary? Or what exactly was the plan there? Uh, no, it actually was not scary at all. It was kind of unfortunate. Uh, we had a last minute call by our teammate Bush, who said, I'm pushing, good luck. And he does that very often. Sometimes he gets all five, and sometimes he gets zero. And that just happened to be one of the times where he gets zero. And it, we, we knew we still won that, that whole map. It, it wasn't a big problem. It happens. But it was funny more than anything. It's definitely nice to see your team kind of uplift you, of course. So um, I just have to say that, obviously, there's not too much to break down there. Two thirteen twos. Y'all did extremely well tonight. Y'all were able to handle business. Uh, moving on to 6 and 0. Oh, I just wanted to ask you if you had any shout outs to anybody that you kind of want to give or, you know, mom or dad watching at home, anything along those lines, any props you want to give out? You know, honestly, the only people I want to shout out is my teammates, man. We came in the semester and we all just had the same idea. Of, let's win everything. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. Let's just buckle down. Let's scrim when we can. Let's play when we can. Take it seriously. And we're undefeated in every league we enter this semester. And it shows every week. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, Metro, I want to say thank you so much for showing us some exquisite Galar uh, Valorant gameplay tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to watch you guys kind of do work and kind of meme a bit with some Odins as well. So you have a wonderful night, man. Thanks for spending your time here with us. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. Flater, that's going to bring us to the end of the broadcast today. We're getting out early tonight. Two 13 mm. two maps. Do you have any final thoughts about kind of what we saw, of course, and potentially the future for this UNC Greensboro squad? Yeah, we saw two quick games, and like this man said, whatever leagues have been that they've been, that they've been going in, they've taken every single one. And you know what? The kind of confidence that that man has ex exuberated upon us, I am not surprised that they take every single game because these guys, they push in, they get two to three kills in a row, and like you said, they are that confident in their mechanical ability. And when you have teammates like that whom you can trust, and when you shout out his team, when you have teammates like that, you got to feel good about your roster. Yeah, you certainly do. And I feel pretty good about this cast with you, Flater. It's been a lot of fun tonight. Of course, I have to give out shout outs to Cool Scoots on the sticks behind mm -hmm. operating those cameras. Also have to give a shout out to Professor Layton behind the scenes as well, pushing all the buttons here so you can hear our voices and get the interviews and everything along those lines. And of course, shout out to ECAC for allowing us to bring College Valorant to the masses. It's definitely a ton of fun and definitely something that I wish I had when I was in college because I'm an old man. So it's definitely nice to see these kids get rewarded and be able to build a community throughout esports. You know, obviously sponsored by their college, able to earn some scholarship money to it as well. So Flater, for me and you, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night and stick around because we'll be back tomorrow with, of course, some Overwatch and some Rocket League. See ya. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make. Because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow in any environment, at any scale. It's not for everyone, but if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an Army officer. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids. That's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two rents They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big 
Call my phone, I'll be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on Shamu. That mean I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Y'all offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one.